Welcome to That's a Wrap, the channel where I review TV shows, movies, and movie trailers, and sometimes theories. Today's TV show that I will be reviewing is episode six of Altered Carbon called Man With A Face. But before I get into my review, if you are enjoying the content, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notification. And if you are not familiar with Altered Carbon or aren't caught up with episode six, consider this your spoiler warning. So on to the review. So in this episode, we are following up in episode five, towards the end, we see Ortega get severely injured in the elevator fight scene. And we basically catch up with Kovacs transporting Ortega to a hospital. And we, we see Ortega coming in and out of consciousness. And he, so he's like basically, you know, trying to just like have her talk to him and interact before she like passes out because she's bleeding out. Now, with the amount of blood that she bled out, she should have been dead. But obviously this is a sci-fi, uh, this is a sci-fi TV show. So they have endless amounts of blood, but he gets to her in time to save her. And it was a nice little scene there. Well, nice, not nice little scene, but they get to the hospital and there's so many people there. And even though she's literally bleeding out, they like don't really care. Obviously in this universe, as long as that magic vertebrae is intact, the body could die. They could, they, you could bleed out and they're like, Hey, you know what? She could get a new sleeve and they almost refuse to take to, to service her and, and not even really refuse. They say, no, we'll get to her, but she has to wait in line. And there's so many people. Then Kovacs uses the fact that he is loaded from being given millions by Bancroft. So he uses that money to say, Hey, no, you're going to, you're going to treat her now. And sure enough, since, you know, money talks in any, any dimension or any era money talks. So they rush her in the back and there's a little dialogue where they say they have to amputate her hand or her arm uh, that was severely injured. And he's like, no, try to heal her. So he has to pay some ridiculously ridiculous amount of money to get her arm fixed. And obviously they save her life and they're going to give her a new arm. So after this, we kind of, he's, he, you know, Kovac, Actually, before I go back to Kovac, we jump to a scene where Poe and Elliot are back at the hotel room and we see Poe trying to help his daughter, which she's trapped in some kind of virtual reality. And he's telling her like, Hey, you know, would you like to hit me? And, you know, kind of like a hey, anger is a way of therapy also, but Elliot doesn't really like it. So he enters in there and kind of. Uh, messes with what Poe was trying to do and Poe kind of takes offense because Elliot had given him consent. I mean, he doesn't say that, but I'm assuming is why he's perturbed and kind of a, a little bit upset at why, why Elliot's interrupting since he gave him consent. And I thought Poe was going to go all ballistic because he goes, Hey, I can't sense fear, but I could sense anger. And these machine guns come out of the roof and, and take aim. But then he gets the call saying that, Hey, officer Ortega was severely injured. So Elliot being partners with Kovac, he rushes to be by his side. So then we cut to Kovac It's raining. And then he has these illusions of his love interest, uh, from his original, his original sleeve, I guess. But we start seeing Kovac is changing the way he thinks about, you know, maybe we're not meant to live forever that maybe we are meant to die and he's kind of going against what the programming that this rebellion was based on and it was a nice intriguing scene uh for that then we cut and and i mean there's a there's a a scene where we're back at the precinct 
and there, you know, the the lieutenant finds out that Ortega has been doing stuff behind, you know, their his back, which caused all of this madness that we saw at the end of episode five. And you know, it's it's it, I mean, it's relevant, but you'll you'll we get more later on in the episode as to why they're relevant. For when you're watching this, you're kind of like, okay, whatever. Then we catch up with our criminals right and we finally get to see the guy that's pulling the strings or at least the one that we think is pulling the strings we're not sure but he seems to be in full control of at least up to this point the bad guys or the 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 people that we are assuming the bad guys and the guy that was in the abuela or the sleeve that was used for the abuela in day of the dead is there but he wants revenge because he still thinks kovac is this other person and he wants revenge for that sleeve and we also get the the i, I mean i'm gonna say i can't remember his name but the the the, the asian character that kind of erases himself from footage in that scene and and there's a little bit of back and forth and the main guy tells him hey you, you're gonna leave kovacs alone until i tell you to and there's a, a bunch of dialogue again you know it, it's it's relevant to the story but i'm not gonna break it down that to that extent so finally we cut to the billionaire where kovac finally goes over there and is trying to well actually before he gets to to bancroft he goes and tracks down this arts dealer in the episode before they found out that uh, bancroft's son was imitating him and what there was an art buyer there so they track him poe kind of is doing this investigative work and when he calls them in the scene where he's outside talking to Elliot, he says, Hey, I found the buyer. And so he gets his address and he goes over there and he basically roughs him up and saying, Hey, you're going to tell me the truth. And he gets the information that he wants. So then we cut to Bancroft in his mansion and everyone's there, the son. And it looks like his, you know, a, a lover, the son's lover, which is, I can't remember the gentleman's name and the mother of the son or Bancroft's wife. Even though I think in the prior episode, they hinted to be like his daughter, which is a weird kind of incestual thing happening there. But anyway, so basically Kovacs spills the beans and say, Hey, they've had a, a body and he's been imitating you and Bancroft loses it. He's like, Oh, so you think you could imitate me and be like me? And you almost feel like he's going to destroy or kill his, his son. And his son's like, no, I just want you to, to respect me. I want you to take notice of me. I want you to understand uh, like how I'm, I'm, I'm seeking your approval. And Bancroft buys it, but he gets like this rod from his fireplace. And you think like, oh, he's gonna, he's gonna go after his son. And even the mom slash sister, I guess, says, no, you're not gonna touch him. But Bancroft just goes off on his own body. The one that was being, I thought it was the OG Bancroft, but I guess it's just a clone that they're using to, or that his son was using to, to imitate his dad. And he goes crazy on it and he basically kills it and destroys it right on the spot. Um, so anyways, we flash back to our criminals and in the, in the scene where they were meeting the main guy, he basically tells them, Hey, you're going to go to this spot and you're going to wait here. But he, you know, escapes because he wants revenge and he doesn't want to be locked, you know, locked down like a lap dog and basically wait for, for other people. So he escapes, right? And he calls someone to teleport him, I guess his consciousness. And he puts this device behind his neck. And when our, I think his name is Mr. Lang or Luing. I can't, I can't remember his name, but it's like Mr. Lang or something like that catches up to him and he's on the floor in the tattoo parlor. Cause that's where this like uh, teleporter, I guess is. So he basically takes that consciousness and puts it in another sleeve. And we find out that the guy that that's running the underground fight club 
it was basically helping out our criminal and which will pay off later. Then we cut to we cut back to Kovac and Ortega and he's basically like by her side and making sure that everything's okay and she wakes up and she asks about her partner and, and Kovac says, "Hey, you know what? He passed away." And she's like, "You lied to me. You told me he was going to be okay." And obviously he was doing that to keep her safe and keep her you know, conscious and, and, and not worry about it except focusing on staying alive. And at this point, the sergeant comes in with a bouquet of flowers and Kovac becomes very suspicious. And he starts asking all these questions like, Hey, you know, it's a fancy bouquet and you know, what's he here. So he starts connecting the dots and then he connects it enough where he finds out that the sergeant's been in on it. He's been the inside man inside the police force, letting, you know, all these entities kind of flow and Ortega goes like, Oh, let me have a word. And it was a nice little scene because Kovac goes, Hey, take, take as much time as you want. Cause she knows that he's about, she, she's about to whoop his, his, his ass and stuff. And she does and gets the information. And he basically tells her, take it like, look, we're just cops. We can't compete with these people that are billionaires and rich. We're just, we're just here to, to keep what order we can and do some, a little bit of good when we can, but Hey, we're, we're just, we're just trying to stay alive as much as everyone else. So we find out that the police in this era or in this futuristic environment is completely corrupt. You know, again, going, you know, uh, imitating life as we know it here in the 21st century. So they, you know, get the information. So they're, you know, going to look for this, the, 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 the bad guys, I guess that Mr. Lang and whoever else is in charge. So they go into this bar, what I assume is a bar where they could kind of tap into the system and go in people's memory since they got, you know, codes and information. So as Kovac volunteers to go in there, he's like, I'm going to find out, you know, and, and he says, Hey, we're going to do it for the partner that she lost in the prior scene, Samir. And he says, we're going to do it for Samir. So he's in there and, and Kovac finally sees the gentleman that is in charge, but then Ortega takes him out and she goes, Hey, you know, oh, while well, Kovac goes, Hey, what, what happened? Why'd you take me out? And she goes, listen, and he goes, I can't, I can't hear anything. And she goes, exactly. There's nothing in there. So they go back upstairs and everyone is just super still in this scenario or in this, in this scene. And then Kovac kind of moves someone and his head just comes off and he, so he's completely decapitated and it becomes like this domino effect. Everyone starts just being, you know, they were decapitated. Someone just, you know, slid all their fate hands, but they did it so fast that their, their head was still there until they got moved. And then we have a surprise where we find out that our criminal, the one that was the abuela, the one that they were using that sleeve up, when he asked to be moved or transferred to another sleeve, guess where that sleeve went into? In the previous review that I said, or in episode five, we find out that there is a sleeve of Takashi, the OG Kovacs, as it will. And sure enough, the criminals in there and in, he throws like this grenade that basically Kovac and Ortega get knocked out. And then we cut to a scene where they're in an elevator and they have their, their you know, uh, covers around their head. And so they, anyways, they get, they get woken up or when they get, get waken up, sure enough, they're back at the underground fight club. I wish I knew the name, but I'm, you know. It, it, it leaves me for right now, but they're back at this, you know, arena that people watch these blood sports and Takashi, you know, the, our criminal in Takashi's body basically tells Kovac, you know, how's it going to feel when you die at the hands of your body? Cause he says, this is your sleeve, right? This is your body. And, and he kind of mocks him. So anyways, him and Ortega are put in this blood fight. 
you know, and there's these two steroid out or freakishly big guys and they're going fighting back and forth. And then they defeat those two. But Takashi, our criminal in Takashi's body, goes in there and he starts slashing them and he's like mocking them. He's like, oh, why am I only cutting you and not hurting you? Could it be because I put some kind of poison to kill you slowly? And... So that's basically what he did. He had poisons in his knife and he was slashing both Ortega and Kovacs where they become paralyzed until they, 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 uh, they die or he kills them. And he basically grabs Ortega and he's about to like kill her in front of, of Kovacs. When we start seeing like these gunshots going on. And there's like this mysterious person. Honestly, when I first saw it, I'm like, what the hell is Hawkeye doing? You know, Ronin at this point, because he was dressed like Hawkeye in Endgame. He had the sword and everything, and he's doing all the moves. And I was like, what the hell? I'm like, am I watching a Marvel property? Is this was, is this what Hawkeye was doing in in between the the when he was you know obviously since the snap. Because he did the same thing. And even the the, the, the sword. Because he was doing like karate and he had like a katana. And he does the same thing we see in Endgame. So maybe the Russo brothers took a little bit of, of plagiarism from this. Because this was definitely out before Endgame. So I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm, I'm just calling it out. That's just the way it seemed. So she basically helps Ortega and Kovacs, even though Ortega towards the end tries to take down this masked person that's dressed like Hawkeye or Ronin, whatever you want to, not Ronin, what was his name? Uh, anyways, you guys know which one, the, the, the image that I'm trying to portray. It's the, basically Hawkeye in Endgame when he's going on Ninja and Assassin. So, you know, Ortega tries to protect Kovac, but, you know, this mysterious person knocks knocks her out or knocks her out of the way. And then she goes up to Kovacs and Kovac kind of looks like she like he's like in awe and and recognize this person. And then she takes off her top and we find out it's Takashi's sister, like the, 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 the one that he grew up like it's at least the sleeve and she but she actually says like hey nice to see you big brother so i must assume that this is the original his his actual sister in her body her, her you know they're still the same and then we cut out that's literally the episode so it was really really entertaining and I, again i i think from episode four five and now six it's full-on captivated me in in my excitement for this for this uh, TV TV miniseries well, not miniseries but this TV series so I completely enjoyed it um, definitely has me on the edge of my my seat when I watch it so again if you if you haven't watched it I highly recommend it I've been saying that for the last three episodes because it's good once you pass those first three episodes, if you're not familiar with the source material, trust me, wait it out to episode four and then it, it's going to just get, I'm hoping that it continues, you know, it could always go down episode seven, eight, nine, but yeah, I highly recommend you guys. If you guys are fans of sci-fi, go watch it. It's on, on a ton of platforms, very entertaining. You won't regret it. So with that said, that's a wrap.